Now everyone, a very happy new year. I hope that you all will get whatever you are thinking of in this particular new year, right? So now in this particular video, we will talk about chat GPT. I hope that you already are aware about now this chat GPT and I'm quite late because of some of the hectic work which I was having. But now from the last few days, I was exploring this chat GPT and I find it really amazing. So here, if you will see, they have trained who open AI people. They have trained a model called chat GPT, which is basically interacts in a conversational way. Until so far, we didn't have something like this, where we will write some query with respect to anything and we will be able to get the output in a AI conversational way. And it's pretty amazing. Whatever questions I have asked from chat GPT, whatever responses I, I, I will be able to get, it's like some human being is giving me the responses like that. And that's why I'm quite, I'm quite amazed. So the dialogue format makes it possible for chat GPT to answer follow up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect uh, premises and reject inappropriate requests. I would request everyone after this video to go and try this chat GPT and try to write few of the queries, whichever is coming in your head, right? Try to see and give me in the comment section that is there some query where you are getting some incorrect response or maybe not up to the mark. I have got few, but uh, that is related to some of the coding part. But uh, all in all, my experience with chat GPT is super. What you need to do here, what you can do is you can just go to try chat GPT. One good thing is that, uh, for example, here also they have written in the sample part that, for example, there in, in the industry, whenever we used to write some code, there are a lot of things where we want to debug the code, right? Maybe some XYZ person have written the code and you want to debug that, that where is the actual error. Now you can just try it out in the chat GPT. That is what I have also done uh, uh, in the last few days. What you can do is that suppose there is some code which is there in any of the programming language and somehow it is not working. Maybe you know the issue why it is not working, but just copy that code and just try to write to the chat GPT that this code is not working fine. How can I fix it? And try to see that whatever responses you're getting from chat GPT, is that something which is perfectly fine or not? One response I got wrong, Otherwise, few of the responses with, with respect to the coding part, I got it correct. But that wrong, I, I can't show because it's confidential. Uh, I was doing with respect to some, you know, uh, coding part with respect to the office work. But all in all, with respect to the DSA questions I have explored, I got some superb results. So let me show you a few, few of the queries. Here you can see, right, one, once you will click on this try ch chat GPT, because I have already signed in with my account. Otherwise, it will show you the screen that sign in first. So what you can do is that you can try to sign it out, sign in using the Gmail ID with whatsoever you are comfortable with. And after that, you can just log in it using this the window will come up. Here you can see that we will be having a different kind of capabilities in chat GPT. For example, it remembers what users said earlier in the conversation. This is what I feel is a very good thing, very good capability, right? The last conversation which I was talking about, if I'm referring that as well, chat GPT remembers that. And that is something which is very, very crucial and very big advantage over other platforms. Similarly, here you, you can see that it trained to decline inappropriate requests. For example, uh, you know, one question which I typed few, uh, few minutes back just to explore this chat GPT. And I said that what is the current, what is the current uh, you know, value in INR of dollars. For example, I'm, I'm writing like this, this kind of a question. Now here you can see that what it is saying, I'm sorry, but I'm a language model. I don't have access to current exchange rates. I can tell you that the exchange rate between two currencies is the rate at which currency can be exchanged. Means it is talking about everything, but it is saying that you can find the current exchange rate between the US dollar and the Indian rupee by using a currency converter or checking a financial news website. 
or by contacting a bank or currency exchange service but it is not able to give me that because i believe it is not taking the uh, you know up to the date the questions from the internet otherwise if suppose i will say what is the bitcoin bitcoin current value so for all these kind of a questions it is not giving me the answer right it's constantly changing it can be difficult to predict with accuracy right so one thing is for sure that for the queries where we are writing something which it doesn't know it is simply giving us a correct response by saying i am sorry i am not sure about that thing which is basically depending on the market values which is basically keep on changing i will not able to get the appropriate result and that is for sure right how uh, this value bitcoin value or current value of inr to dollars how it will be able to generate if it is not fetching up the data currently from the internet it means that it it, it is already trained on, on some of the data set and it's not like that 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 data is keeping on changing just like the values which i am expecting from this on the other hand if i'll just expect from the chat gpt to give me a you know what is the easy level a uh, graph based problem asked very frequently in interviews very frequently in interviews if you will see here you will be amazed see one common graph based problem that is often asked in interview is finding the shortest path between two nodes in a graph the problem is known as shortest path problem and can be solved using a dijkstra's algorithm or acer algorithm so it is giving me a proper you know question with respect to the solution as well proper explanation another common graph based problem that is often asked in interviews is detecting cycles in a graph that problem is solved using a cycle detection algorithm so it is talking about the problem statement it is talking about how that problem can be solved and what kind of algorithm that you can apply to solve that particular problem and this can be solved using algorithms like dfs and, and bfs both of these problems are considered to be a moderate difficulty and are often used to test a candidate's understanding of a graph theory and algorithms so now you know you can you can before going to any company's interview you can also check by asking chat gpt that can you tell me some uh, you know crucial problems of every data structure which are very frequently asked in any you know interviews basically if you are if you are preparing for any uh, uh, google company or any facebook company or you know apple or amazon or any startup so you can just directly type it out and you will be able to get at least those problems which are very frequently asked and whatsoever problems uh, you know chat gpt is giving to me the, as a response i believe both of these problems are from me as well when i was preparing for these these kind of companies so it's very true it's very genuine gen genuine result i would say which chat gpt is giving to me apart from that if suppose i'll say uh, uh give me the give me the implementation of detecting detecting a cycle in a graph discussed in previous response let's see what it will generate to me now here you know it's quite it's quite amazing see these kind of results you know when i when i saw this for the first time when i was using chat gpt i was amazed i was completely amazed see how basically it is giving me the explanation that here is an example of dfs dfs algorithm for detecting a cycle in a directed graph then it is giving me a complete python code which if you will copy this code and run it it will be perfectly fine i can see that it's it's completely fine and it is basically explaining to me each and every bit of the step as well that this algorithm works by maintaining two sets visited and recursion stack visited stack keeps track of the nodes recursion stack keeps track of the that the, the nodes that are that are currently on the recursion stack algorithm starts at each node 
how it is doing when it is saying it as true indication when it is saying it as a false indication true means that cycle is detected and false means it is not uh, detected it's it's doing a tremendous job right giving me the algorithm name giving me the implementation apart from not giving me the implementation it is also trying to give me a proper explanation of what the code is talking about or what the code is doing isn't it amazing you have to try at your home the sprinkler thing not only you know a specific to dsa if i'll talk about maybe stats portion okay maybe i'll say a few days back only i have uploaded one video of central limit theorem let's talk about that let's say what is tell me what is central limit theorem okay now see statistical theorem that states distribution of the sum of a large number of independent and iid random variables will tend to normal distribution even if original variables themselves are not normally distributed i hope everyone knows now right those who are not aware about this theorem just watch my previous video where i have completely demonstrated what is clt all about can you explain any real life example of central limit theorem let's see what it explains although i have also explained one example i hope that you will be able to uh, you know get the understanding of that example as well but let's see what chat gpt is giving to us imagine that you on a bakery and you want to know the average weight of a bagel that you produce you could weigh every single bagel that you make but this would be time consuming and impractical that's quite tedious task that that's true instead you could take a sample of bagels and use their average weight as an estimate of the average weight of all the bagels that you produce so 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 true right so you can just try to read the explanation further i am not going in very much depth because i know that uh, it's quite fine it's quite appropriate by just looking the very first para i, I can see that perfect any other thing for example i don't want to go into technical domain i want to ask uh write a uh letter you know uh to my manager uh for taking a sick leave let's see what it generates i am writing to request a sick leave of absence due to illness i have been feeling symptoms this 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 i'll make every effort to complete any urgent task and ensure a smooth handover of my ongoing work before i leave I'll also keep in touch with my team and be available to answer any questions or provide any kind of assistance as needed during my absence. See how tremendously I am getting all the responses. I just need to change the manager with the with the name of my manager name. I have to talk about my illness and the symptoms which I am getting, and my task is done. I have to talk, write just my name. That's it, right? So simple. So starting from any technical domain, uh, looking into the code bugs. or writing the code itself or writing the letter to my manager for taking a sick leave or talking about any you know important questions with respect to dsa which is one of the major query for many of the students when they are approaching towards any of the interviews they struggle a lot that what are the you know uh, questions that we should pick up as a very first instance to you know go for any of the interview now chat gpt is answering all of them i found it pretty amazing there are so many questions apart from that which you can try to explore it on your own and i have also explored all the things works great for me but you also try to tell me in the comment section that what things uh, you know you like about chat gpt and have you have you gone through any drawback where it is not giving you the appropriate results or it is giving some some something which is not you know expected so do let me know in the comment section i'll wait i will for sure wait for your comments and with this i am again saying happy new year to everyone and uh, keep learning keep exploring just see the magic of ai and i believe that this ai domain is booming and will boom a lot in future as well the way we are we are approaching towards the next generation uh, you know everything is quite automated and one of the question which usually students ask that is these kind of things will replace the job market 
uh, is there future need of you know uh, data scientists or the people in software engineering domain or front end or back end developers definitely yes these are the things which are basically helpful for us only right but it's not like that they will replace our job itself it will never happen like that we are the creators uh the the people like us only have created these these things right so it's not like that that these things will replace the complete job market itself don't get afraid of that the only thing that you need to make sure is that you are upskilling yourself with the job market so that in future if need comes you are flexible enough to you know uh, uh to understand the new things to learn new things have that much enthusiasm in you that whatever comes in you whatever be the urgency in your team whatever be, whatever be the skill set required for you you are flexible enough to to you know change accordingly and if you are then i believe that no one will replace you you are the important asset for that company itself with this happy learning to all bye bye everyone and i'll see you all in my next upcoming video